Yobachi2007 back at you with another one. You all have to excuse my voice. I'm recovering from a little cold and cough and respiratory things, so my voice isn't projecting out like normal. But I wanted to go ahead and get a video recorded and scheduled. So, you know, y'all, I went on vacation to Africa and came back and, you know, can't get no viewership. Y'all just abandoned a brother quick, so I want to keep the videos going because a little hiatus and y'all be out of here. So let's listen to what this woman is talking about and, uh, and then we'll come back to talk about what she says. All right. She's done her little want to be seductive dance. And she's here comparing herself to a car. Now, if men compared her to a car, we're objectifying, we're narcissists, we're trash. How dare you? And all that kind of stuff. But here she goes. She compares herself to a car. And uh, so that's, again, why you can't listen to anything women say because they're full of crap and constantly duplicitous. But she's a year 1994. So that's the year she's born. So she's 29. She had four previous owners. But seven miles. Now, if you have four dudes smash, you don't hit more. You don't went long, a lot further than seven miles. So what's the difference between owners and okay owners are boyfriends and miles are the number of dudes she smashed i don't know if that's in a you know women lie so she didn't count the four she had as boyfriend so the real number is at least 11 at least and they usually lie more than that so it's probably higher but it's definitely at least 11 she tried to play with the numbers and not count the dudes she's been with not count the boyfriends as dudes she's been with all right she says she's a model not at five five Maybe a fitness model. Uh, fuel. Totally possessive men. Or oh, toxically possessive men. Even worse. Oh my goodness. Like these women. She's hitting 30. And she's still a child mentally. Still that child mind state. Where she thinks life is about. Uh, this, is, this is the problem with women. Women. They need constant titillation. They're not. So, most women are not settled in their minds or spirit. And what they thrive off of is constant titillation. That's why they love for men to cheat on them. They love to be done wrong by men. That's why we tell you that treat a woman like crap and she'll love you more than if you treat her well. Because they want any kind of attention and any kind of thrill. They don't care what kind it is. It can be negative. And that's just as good, if not better. Because it makes them and allows them to feel something. And everything these type of empty, soulless women um Everything that they thrive off of is all about feelings. There are women who aren't like that, but this is the majority. And even the ones who aren't totally like this have some tendencies towards that direction as well. But so many modern women are fully engulfed in that uh, that kind of uh, way of thinking and operating. So downsides, attitude problems. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so men, jump on it. She's got attitude problems. Who doesn't want that? Traumatized trust issues and bonus issues. <laughs> oh my goodness. The fact that you refer to yourself as a MILF is disgusting. Nobody, first of all, you're a baby mama, so then you just disqualified yourself pretty much for the most part for most men who have something and want to keep what they have and um, don't want to be giving it away to somebody else's family. But further, even if a guy was interested and maybe dealing with you, maybe dealing with one child, assuming maybe you only have one. Your vileness in coming online out into the world and presenting yourself to the world as the mother that I would like to, you presenting yourself that way disqualifies anything, anybody else left who would have considered you who's worth anything. You can stick with your to toxically possessive men. That's all you qualify for. So she's funnier than you and Lloyd. All these women think they're funny. <laughs> watch Kendra G or watch uh, Melly Monaco and ask women what's, what's things that are good about them that, that men be looking to have them for. And I'm funny is what like half of them say. They all think they're hilarious and most of us don't agree. That's not an attribute men are looking for in a woman. In a woman. Women want men to be comedians for them and have all these ridiculous requirements that have nothing to do with relationships. But men aren't looking for that. If I want comedy, I'll click on my Netflix and watch Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock specials. I'm not looking for a woman, woman to be my comedian. But these insane expectations by these women are funny. 
So hit the like, subscribe to this channel so you can come back and get more of it and we can keep this discussion going on these crazy women. And with that, we're right back to the program. Okay, we've got another Wallace. That's women hitting the wall. Let's see what this one's talking about. I'm hurting y'all because Why are you hurting sis? I want to be love. I want marriage. You know, a lot of us get on here and we act tough and we be like, I don't want a man. I don't need a man, but I want help. I want to be loved. I want somebody to love me. I want somebody I can be vulnerable with. The problem is, and I'm not crying y'all because I'm sad. I'm crying y'all because it's like a release right now. But the problem for me, y'all, is that all the relationships that I had with men were not about love. It was about survival for me. I know how to fuck. I know how to cook. I know how to clean. I know how to seduce a man. I do not know how to love a man. And then to have a son, because of those choices that I was making, y'all, and I got pregnant really, really fast. I got pregnant within 90 days of knowing my baby daddy. And we don't talk about this shit because it's embarrassing and it hurts. It fucking hurts. And I'm mad with me. I'm not mad at men. I'm not mad at I'm not mad at my life. I'm I'm, I'm mad at me. Alright, let's talk about that. Well, since she was at least willing to take some level of accountability and put things on herself, we're not gonna ride on her too hard. We're gonna actually give her some advice. Uh, first things, she said that she wasn't qu crying because she's sad. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, it's just, it's just a release. A release of sadness, lady. Stop capping. Okay, so we just move on past that one. But she's still on here with the talk about, I don't need a man, I want a man. If you're going to keep up feminist verbiage and feminist ideologies in your uh, dealings with men, you're just going to be at a disadvantage continuously. Men who have something, men who have respect for themselves, and men who have something to lose don't want to deal with third wave, fourth wave feminist and your I don't need a man, I don't want a man talk in concept. So drop that crap out the gate. You clearly need a man that you wouldn't be on here crying. So disown that and move forward. Other problems, uh, you know, I, I heard well, uh, some other things that were in there. Again, the vulgarity. Okay, a lot of you guys don't care, and that's fine. But a lot of men do care. So why would you, and they, they care, it's not that they don't curse themselves. And you can call it a double standard if you want to. I don't, I don't care. As a, Actually, as, as a man of substance who, uh, a, who's a professional, even if you curse, you should be curtailing that kind of language in public display. You should have some honor and some decorum about yourself as a man. That's part of being a man. You can't lead a woman to have decorum when you don't have any. But why would you do something that even if many, let's say even the majority of the men that you're trying to attract don't mind, just the fact that let's say 30% of them mind. Why would you cut 30% out of your possible realm? That makes no sense. So uh, a lot of men aren't going to deal with some woman who's willing to be this publicly vulgar and mixed company. Because it's like, hey, what the, you know, <laughs> conduct yourself with some decorum. Come on an interview or a, a broadcast a self-broadcast where you push the play button and record button with your hair done looking like something. You don't got to be done up. You just don't got to look like, um, you know, as you just got through working out in the field, picking cotton all day. The fact that you don't have consideration to come up here and, and, and deal, to look for men and to try to attract men and don't even bother with bare minimum is just a big turnoff. This is a no for guys. And these are the things that we need to look at, fellas. When we're dealing with women and when we're assessing women, we need to assess all of these types of factors. At least the good thing is for her, she's taking the first step of recognizing her problem. Hopefully she can find somebody to help her with all that and do something about it. But either way, uh, it's not your burden and your job to go and save these women. You have built yourself up, and what, that's what you should be doing. You should be working to earn your optimal income. You should be working on your optimal health. 
and you should be bringing everything to the table that you can bring so that you're in a power position to choose the woman you want. And when you have done that, you shouldn't be giving it away to save baby mamas. You can talk with them and mentor with them if they're willing to listen to you and help them in that way. But your job isn't to come save them and help them with their lives at the expense of your life. So we're going to keep that in mind. We're going to keep it uh, pushing with these. And we're going to stay on the next. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And we're going to get back at you with the next one. Remember, fellas, this is all about us being the best us we can be and making good assessments about who we deal with so that we're not losing out in the game. Again, like this video up, help me push, uh, get pushed through the algorithm, and I'll catch you on the next one. Yobachi 2007. I'm out.